Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. So here, my name is Dava Prati Deva Narabadan. You can call me Dava. I'm from Chengkaring campuses, majoring in English literature, and now I'm about to explain it to you or elaborate a bit about the language and gender dynamics, which is which cover analyzing female language features, sexist discourse, elocutionary acts, and locutions. Without any further ado, let's get started. So the discourse between gender and language were always fascinating to be explored. On these occasions, I would like to de dive deeply into the discussion on how female sexism, locutionary, and locution are intercorrelated on, on a daily basis. We often realize that society has a significant shift in understanding gender bias paradigm. paradigm. Therefore, this presentation aims to provide a comprehensive understanding using gender responsive theory and equip ourselves with a complex knowledge in, in gender bias correlated within language development. So what is gender and sex? So sex is referred to physical characteristic that someone is born with male or female. So the appearance of the person itself who determines which sex they are belongs to. And gender is something that refers to non-physical appearance such as attitudes, preferences, uh, in which not always related to physical characteristics. And then um, there is a female language feature. So the discourse between female and male has arose since a long time ago. So to have a comprehensive understanding toward so this topic, we have to know that female has to control or restrict themselves from disrupting behaviors such as love, love out loud, not supposed to swear, since they consider it as a trophy for men. So it needs to be as perfect as possible. So other than that, women have to consider the utterance they want to express in conversations. They tend to have more polite and highly poetic language in a way of displaying themselves in front of others, such as you have such an excessive dashing look on your glamorous suits today, instead of saying you look handsome. And secondly is lack of stated that they are standing with the features of women's speech, such as lexical hedges, thick questions, rising intonation and declaratives, empty adjective, precise colored terms, intensifiers, such as just and so, happy correct grammar, super polite forms, avoidance of strong swear words, and empathic stress. And last but not least is according to research, men prove to be most interruptive one while talking since women are more sympathetic, empathetic, and accommodating. So men interrupt more since they want to assert their positions in front of the society. So secondly, the second topic is that sexist discourse. So in English, this is a very common case where a job or position is exclusively only uh, for one specific entity. For example, there's firemen, policemen, stewardess, hostess, and baroness. So beyond that, there are some kind of language that this position women such as tart, spunky, bitch, where these words are not applicable for men. So therefore, we really, need, we really need to avoid this kind of language since it's irrelevant and might cause discordance. Instead, we can use more neutral words such as cabin crew instead of stewardess or stewardman, officer for police, spokesperson instead of spokeswoman or spokesman, and then chairperson uh, instead of chairwoman or chairman, firefighter, etc. So, the next discussion that we, we have is elocutionary acts. So elocutionary acts is performed merely by in saying something, asserts, questions, exclaim, treat, promise, apologize. And a concrete example would be tutors are, are amazing. So this is kind of like assertion. And I wonder where it came as this. And this is one of the example of questions from the elocutionary acts. And elocutionary point, this is the characteristic of each type of speech act. For instance, the characteristic aim of an assertion is to describe what things are. And then thirdly is degree of strength of the elocutionary point. Two, elocution, two elocutions can have the same point but differ along the dimension of strength. For example, requesting and insisting that addressee do something both have the point to get addressee to do that thing. And then a fourth is mode of achievement. So in this case, the elocutionary point of a speech act must be achieved, testifying and asserting both have the point of describing how things are, while commanding and requesting both aim to get addressee to do something. Yet only someone issuing a comment does so in her capacity. 
Next is proportional content conditions. So some elocutions can only be achieved with an appropriate proportional content. For instance, I can only promise what is what is in the feature and under my control. And then next one is preparatory conditions. So these are all other conditions that must be met for the speech act not to misfire. For instance, a person cannot equate an object unless she already owns it or has power of attorney. And then next one is sincerity condition. So many speech acts involve the expressions of physiological, physiological uh, state. So assertion expresses belief, apology expresses regret, a promise expresses an intention, and so on and so forth. Last but not least is degree of strength of the sincerity conditions. So two speech acts might be the same along other dimensions, but express phys physiological states, states that differ from one another dimensions of strength. And then the next one, other apart from elocution, we have locution. So locution is an intense, an instance of using language. So this seems mundane, but it hides real complexity since it is all wrapped up with speaker's intention. So we don't really know what the speakers really intend about when they are speaking. So this speech is often referred as the act of saying something. So in this speech act, a series of, a series of language are produced, meaning something. Furthermore, speech acts are relatively the easiest to identify because their identifications, identifications tends to be done without including the context of the speech. So here are 60 findings after I have analyzing all of the uh, distortion of this discourse that uh, that include or that covered within the topics. The first is that for the female language features, women often use more expressive and, and emotionally nuanced language compared to men, while linguistic features such as hedges, like I think, maybe tech questions, uh, isn't it, don't you think, and intensified so fairy are more frequent, frequently used by women. And then uh, the second one is that uh, sexist discourse. So sexist language and discourse perpetuate gender, gender stereotypes and reinforce traditional power structures. For example, include the use of diminutive, sweetie, honey, and patronizing speech patterns when addressing women, which undermine their authority and expertise. And then the third the thirdly is that elocutionary acts. So as, as elocutionary acts refers to, it, to the intentions behind speech acts, women may face challenges in uh, being taken seriously in authoritative elocutionary acts as their speech may be interpreted as less assertive or competent. And then the fourth one is locution. So it refers to literal meaning of an utterance. Therefore, differences in locutionary style between genders can influence how messages are received. For instance, women may use more polite and or indirect language to mitigate potential conflict. And then the uh, the fifth one is power dynamics. So language is a crucial tool negotiating power dynamics between genders. Therefore, men tend to use to assert dominance and control, while women may use language to build relationship and seek consensus. And then last but not least is intersectionality. So the study of language and gender must consider intersectionality, where other social identities such as race, class, and sexuality intersect with gender to shape linguistic behaviors and experiences. For example, women of different racial or cultural backgrounds may employ these same ling language strategies. So next, I think, that's all for this presentation. Thank you so much for watching. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.